After a rate hike in January 2023 and two more rate hikes in June and July, the Toronto real estate market has officially hit the brakes. But could we experience a similar market to Q1 and Q2 of 2023 when rates held if the Bank of Canada decides to hold the rate again on their September 6th meeting? I don't think we experienced the same run-up, but I do think that when the Bank of Canada holds rates, people are going to be surprised at how quickly the market turns. And some buyers on the sidelines could be left behind, possibly again. Pretty much every news outlet in Canada has hit the ground running this morning with articles around the Toronto and Canadian real estate markets, the Bank of Canada, rates, and anything related to those. Today, we're going to take a look at the Toronto and GTA real estate market data for the month of July. My name is McCallum, and I'm a real estate agent in the city of Toronto, and I lead a team of amazing agents who work every single day with buyers, sellers, and tenants. If you learn anything from this video, please consider hitting both the like and subscribe buttons. I would greatly appreciate it because the more you interact with my videos, the more the YouTube algorithm will push it to other people like yourself looking to learn more about the Canadian and Toronto real estate markets. And if you'd like to chat further about buying, selling, or just about the market, you can go to the first link in the description of this video to book a meeting directly into my calendar at a time that works best for you. We're going to quickly run through the year over year summary for the entire greater Toronto area market. As you can see here, the number of sales which occurred on Treb's MLS in July of 2023 was 5,250, whereas the number of sales in July of 2022 was 4,870. The average price across Treb's MLS system in July of 2023 was 1.118 million, and in July of 2022 was $1.073 million which is an increase of $45,000. And we'll look at the year-over-year -year summary table with the number of sales increasing by 7.8% year-over-year, new listings increasing by 11.5%, active listings increasing by a mere 0.3%, and average price increasing by 4.2%. Listing days on market dropped by 10.5% and property days on market dropped by 17.2% year-over-year year in the entire Greater Toronto Area. If you've watched this channel long enough, you'll know that year-over-year year data is good to know, but it's not the most important, especially when we're going through this point of a real estate cycle. The month-over-month month or quarter-over-quarter quarter data is far more relevant when you're making a decision in this type of market. And the data we're going to walk through from now until the end of this video is specifically for the City of Toronto, so the 416 area code. This data does not include stats from other cities such as Mississauga, Pickering, Ajax, Brampton, etc. Let's kick it off with the average price across detached, semis, townhouses, and condos. The average price of a detached home in the city of Toronto is now $1.64 million, which is up from July of 2022 when the average price was $1.515 million. However, the detached market segment in the 416 area code did drop 8% from June to July. When taking a look at the semi-detached market, we can see that the average price from July of 2022 to July of 2023 is fairly similar with July 2022 being $1.268 million and in July of 2023 being $1.257 million. However, similar to the detached market segment, the semi-market dropped 11% from June to July of 2023. You're likely starting to see the trend here with this data. The townhouse market performed similar to the detached and semi-markets, with townhouses in July of 2022 selling for an average of $1.25 million, and in July of 2023 selling for an average of $1.142 million. The townhouse market segment also saw an 11% drop from June to July. The condo market in Toronto increased by $9,000 on average from July of 2022 to July of 2023. However, the condo market has dropped from $770,000 in June to $753,000 in July, which represents a 2% decrease in values. 
Now, what's glaringly obvious is the correlation between interest rates rising, or holding for that matter, and price acceleration from January of 2023 to May of 2023. Following the rate increase in January, the two rate holds on March 8th and April 12th of 2023 spurred the market into action. And then in early June, when we saw a 25 basis point hike, the market slowed down. As it stands right now, across detached, townhouses, and condo apartments, May was the peak of the market for 2023. The only asset class which did not peak in May, however, peaked in June, was semis, but that increase from May to June was only $8,000. So pretty much all major asset classes peaked in May of 2023 so far. The average price is what everybody really wants to know at the end of the day, but let's take a deeper look at the rest of the data to find out why the average price is dropping on a monthly basis. The months of inventory is absolutely skyrocketing right now. And this is happening because we are seeing more active listings on the MLS at the end of the month compared to the number of sales which occurred during the month. When the number of active listings is high and the number of sales is low, it means that it would take longer for all available inventory to sell. What this is telling us is that we are moving closer towards a balanced and a buyer's market depending on the asset class. The number of new listings hitting the MLS is tailing off. However, because there were fewer sales, there are more active listings at the end of the month, which ultimately means that buyers do have more inventory to choose from compared to a few months ago. We can also look at days on market, which a lot of people are more familiar with because it's a pretty simple data point to analyze. The number of days properties are sitting on the market is increasing across all asset classes with detached houses sitting on the market for 15 days on average, semis for 12 days, townhouses for 12 days, and condo apartments for 20 days. I also do want to take a look at the list price to sale price ratio, which can give us a broader look at how the market is performing with respect to how over or under list price properties are selling for on average. As you can see, all home types across the board have experienced a lowering of their list to sale price ratios. What this is telling us is that we are seeing fewer bidding wars and multiple offers because properties are now trending towards selling at their asking price. Semis on average are selling for 8% over asking, townhouses 5% over asking, detached 2% over asking, and condo apartments which are now selling at 100% of asking meaning right at asking price on average. If the Bank of Canada holds interest rates on September 6th, what impact do you think that has on the real estate market? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.